You're standing on the last point about to win the fight. Your team is up by three kills and all of a sudden you hear it. It's high noon. You completely freeze. You look to your left, you look to your right, and there's no cover in sight. The high noon kills one, two, three, four of your teammates. Your tank is left alone, killed and staggered, and you lose the entire game. Now this is the reality of having terrible positioning. Not only are you gonna die more often, you're gonna completely throw team fights and you're never gonna be able to carry. So in this video, we're gonna break down the six positioning rules to pop off and never die. But it says that only 4.1% of you are subscribed. So if you appreciate the content and like what I'm doing here, please consider smashing the like and subscribe and let's get into the video. Now this is a thought exercise that is as old as Overwatch itself, but it's if High Noon, Visor, or Diva Bomb flew in out of nowhere or was activated, would you die where you're currently standing? Now this is just to get the gears turning about your position and to tell you that playing out in the open can be very bad to position yourself because you could easily die to any of those abilities with no way to get out. This leads us to our first building block of positioning, natural cover. Now natural cover are the areas on the map that you can hide behind perceived as natural walls and obstruction that both block fire and typically line of sight as well. Now the beautiful thing about natural cover is that it will allow you to survive any of these situations. If a soldier pops tack visor, but you can turn around a corner or high noon, same thing. Diva bomb also natural cover saves you. The idea here is instead of positioning yourself near nothing in the middle of the open where you have nowhere to run or hide, if you're close to some form of cover, you can quickly run away to safety and easily survive any of the incoming ultimates or attacks. In addition to this, natural cover allows you to easily weave in and out of it, choosing when you want to be peeking the enemy versus not. Imagine you have some form of cover while the enemy has none. Well, the enemy has to fight you when you're peeking them. If they are ready to fight and you're reloading, for instance, or you want to hide and get heals, you can quickly dip behind your cover and the enemy can't see you at all. This allows you to dictate the terms of the engagement, providing you a huge advantage in a 1v1 consistently. Natural cover also gives you the flexibility to run away. If you need to dip out of a fight altogether and you don't want to fight a fight that you're going to lose, natural cover gives you that option. But if you're out in the open already full committed, you have no option except to fight and hope Hopefully win. Now you might be saying, hey, I'm an alpha chat. I can win every single fight. I don't care. Well, imagine you're fighting someone and a second person enters the fray. Having cover allows you to say, hey, that's not a fair fight. Let's dip out of here. Rather than getting attacked by two or three people at the same time, like this is a college bar fight. So I'd say a general rule of thumb for learning position is make it so that you're no more than three seconds away from any sort of natural cover on the map. And that will better situate you for any of the random scenarios that happen throughout the course of a game next up we got to talk about the high ground and its importance the high ground offers many things that amplifies your plays allowing you to carry more and makes you more survivable sounds like a pretty good thing but why does it do this First off, let's talk about the playmaking potential. If you're above the enemy team, you have more line of sight of the battlefield, allowing you to survey exactly what's going on and giving you key opportunities to throw abilities or damage exactly what you want to. Let's take Ana for example, a character that if she plays the low ground, it's pretty hard for her to get her nade, for instance, over a D.Va DM or a Rhine shield. But if she's playing the high ground, she can wait for those key opportunities where those characters are distracted or toss her nade over the enemy Reinhardt shield to easily nade the enemy backline. These are a few examples of where you can make plays and you get more information simply by being on the high ground. But the list of benefits don't stop there. You automatically have inherent natural cover when you play the high ground. Think about it. If you're standing on the high ground looking down below, you can see the enemy. But if you back up, now the enemy can't see you. So just like the natural cover example, whether it was a wall or a corner, the high ground is a form of natural cover as well. So you get to make better plays, have more information information on the fight, see more enemies, and decide exactly when you want to fight them without them getting the same flexibility in return. Now to elaborate on that last point, you get to decide who you peek and when you peek, and the enemies don't have any say in the matter. On top of that, the high ground gives you one super special benefit, and that's mobility. 
the ability of pursuit. Let me give you this example. You're fighting someone on the high ground that is on the low ground, but that low ground person has natural cover themselves, but you do a ton of damage to them. You can use the high ground, jump off of it, go all the way to the low ground, and pursue them and be there in an instant. Gravity and the fact that there's no fall damage in this game allows you to use that high ground as instant mobility straight to the low ground and pursue your target. It also gives you the flexibility to run away from an enemy who is trying to chase you or chases you up to the high ground, you can easily drop down to the low ground and give yourself more time, more movement to potentially evade your attacker or get peeled from your team. Now the last important piece of the high ground that you need to consider is that some characters actually can't do anything to you when you're above them. If you're a Soldier 76 and you're shooting down from above, can a Reinhardt realistically do consistent damage to you? Sure he has two fire strikes, but that's realistically not going to get you off of that position. And there's a number of characters that can do very little to contest you. There's Brig, there's even a ton of DPS like Reaper and Mei. A lot of these characters would have to route all the way to you, and by then you could completely reposition or predict them and use that to your advantage. While there are some characters that can easily scale the high ground and definitely contest you, there's a ton of characters in the entire roster of characters that basically can't do anything to you besides route all the way to you and force you off physically, and if they don't, you're going to get a ton of free value, and you're probably going to get a lot of value during their transitionary phase to you anyways. Now, as the fourth general rule that you need to adopt to your play is that good positions give you options. I want you to consider where you're positioning and what options are available to you, whether that's proactive playmaking options or retreation options, going back to your team or just running away altogether. I want you to take note of where health packs are because a health pack being near you that you can kite away to gives you extra sustain and makes that position inherently stronger. You also need to think about what your position is relative to the rest of your team because the options could be to run away back to your team given a sticky situation. And it's important to understand that positioning is often based on the space and areas on the map that your team control. So you could be in the high ground with tons of cover completely across the map from your team and it's a pretty bad position considering that if multiple enemies route to you and push you, you don't have a ton of retreation options. Now this leads me directly to my fifth point and that's positioning is never static or 100%. A lot of players want me to tell them where to be standing or positioning in every single game on their character of choice. Like if you're Ana, you should play right here. If you're Ryan, you should play right here. But the reality of the situation is there is no perfect position on any character because position is directly dependent based on the strengths and weaknesses that is found in your composition and based on the enemy's pick. Let me give you this example. If the enemy team is playing a composition that has zero divers that can isolate you, you can play really far back with a character like Ana and still support your team through line of sight. This is going to make you less likely to die to anything with close range damage or eat any of the ultimates that are being thrown your team's way. However, it makes you far more isolated from your team and it's a lot harder for you to get peel from your team. So if the enemy had multiple divers, then it could be a very weak position because enemies would come and seek you out when you're isolated and alone, and it would be far better for you to play with your team that could better protect you. That is the exact same character on the same map that could be holding two different compositions based on the threats and play styles of the enemy team. Position can also change directly dependent on your own confidence, your skill, and your play style. If you're a more aggressive player, but you can play in a position and still not get punished, then that's a risk that you're going to have to take. There are some positions that are inherently more risky, but have more potential reward, allowing you to make bigger plays. And it's really up to you to decide how risky you want your position to be and how confident you are in using your own mechanical skill to bail yourself out or relying on your teammate to bail you out. Not every teammate is that reliable, so maybe a more passive position is more preferred, but if you have a duo partner that you know will bail you out of a sticky situation and you're getting a lot of value by playing more aggressively, it could be worthwhile as well. That's why position is static, never 100%, and should always be changing every single game. You gotta think critically before you know how to position properly. The next two tips are going to give you insane impact when done correctly, but you have to apply everything that we talked about in the first part of this video. 
The first topic we got to talk about is off angles. Now, off angle is an adjacent angle from your team, allowing you to deal damage to the enemy backline or the side of the enemy, forcing them to divide their focus and you to get more value because the enemy is focused on the brute front of your team. Now, this is going to be better on certain characters, characters that have mobility, characters like Soldier 76 that can deal damage from quite further away are going to be able to play these long distance off angles better. Other characters might need to get a little bit closer to the action, and that's going to teeter more on the flanking side, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, while you can definitely off angle with the character that doesn't have mobility, let's say a character like Cassidy that has very limited mobility, you are uniquely vulnerable because you don't have a way to easily get out of danger. And if the enemy has a Genji or a Diva, for instance, that wants to come and chase you down, you might just die for free because even if you're in cover or in the high ground you won't be able to run away from these characters and you have no means of heal and peel from your team speaking of heal even if you're on an off angle your position gets far better if you're within the effective range and the line of sight of your supports if you're playing pretty far away from your team but your ana can still see you for instance even if you're under threat you can realistically get a ton of value and force more than one enemy to come and actually contest you and if that's the case the team on the front line will have a huge advantage over the team that is still staying behind and trying to fight them now you always got to know your team's position versus the enemy because the enemy could actually want to come and contest you out before they go and push the main objective and you definitely don't want to be in a situation where you die only for the enemy team to then divert their focus to your team who is now down a member and as a last rule of thumb on off angles have an out just like with all the other things we talked about you need to have a get out of jail plan and you still need to be playing around all the same fundamentals that we talked about in the first part of this video to ensure that you don't get picked off and feed leading to your team losing the team fight now the last thing that we got to talk about in this video that has the ultimate upside but also is the riskiest it's flanking and flanking oftentimes will forego a ton of positioning in order to get free value you but you're typically isolating yourself and potentially getting picked off but if a flank goes successful it will actually get a ton of value so what are the key aspects to enabling a flank and making sure it's a success versus a failure well really the biggest thing that you need to understand about flanking is that timing is the most important thing when trying to execute a flank you need to be able to flank quick enough so that your entire team doesn't die because you're out of the fight, but you can't flank too quickly to where the enemy team can just turn around and focus you as an isolated target. It's a slippery slope, and oftentimes getting that flanking proper depends on your individual mechanical skill and the character you're on, but I would highly suggest starting off with some soft flanking that still adheres to the many rules that we talked about. Having natural cover, having the high ground, giving you a way out, out. However, sometimes full committing to a flank, foregoing positioning, and contributing all to the playmaking that you're going to elicit on the enemy is the proper play, but it's very risk reward dependent. And there's going to be a key moment when you forego all positioning only to finish off the enemy, but it has to be worth giving that up. It has to be worth giving up all the safety that you typically want to play around 99% of the time. One of the best ways to make this transaction not as risky is by going on a very, very aggressive flank when your team is losing the fight and it's not likely that you're going to be able to win the fight with normal means. What I mean by that is you go for a high risk, high reward play, hopefully insta killing someone who is unsuspecting and then winning a duel with a secondary target because you're at a huge disadvantage. Let's say you start off on an off angle and two of your teammates die. This is a fight that you're very unlikely to lose and because you're at an off angle, it's also pretty unlikely for you to get out if the enemy focus you unless you're a character with tons of mobility. So what do you do? Well, you could just go straight to the car and make sure you don't stagger, but a better situation might be to full flank and try to commit, play for a high risk, high reward play that could turn out huge by insta-killing an unsuspecting opponent, finishing off a low HP target, and potentially winning a fight that you were at a huge disadvantage in. And the big plus side to doing things this way is if it doesn't go right, it doesn't really matter because you lost the fight anyways. You want to reset. And at worst, it doesn't work out. But flanking when your team is at parity, especially when you're foregoing a lot of the positioning fundamentals to try to maximize on your kill potential, 
if that doesn't work out, you could be the cause of your team losing the team fight. So it is incredibly risky, and I'm not going to tell you to never do it. I'm going to tell you to be very cautious about doing it. And like I said, 99% of the time, you should be adhering to every single one of these positioning fundamentals. And maybe 1% of the time, you can go for something a little spicy spicy and get that play of the game. But don't be the feeder that's throwing your games. <laughs> Please smash the subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you want to get VOD reviewed, I offer consistent paid coaching in the Discord, but... I also offer free advice and free coaching randomly if you're a active member of the community. So come hop in right now in the links down below.